Hi, I'm Jake. I do Pathfinder 2 videos and the off-topic video of, like, how to treat each other better during games. How to not be a jerk. That kind of thing. Okay, I've had a request. So there's another Howl of the Wild video. This is going to be on the Untamed Morphs, so it's things for both Barbarians and Druids. As long as you have some way of using the Morph or Polymorph trait abilities. Some barbarians and all druids are in tune with the primal forces of nature, but some, particularly animal instinct barbarians and untamed ordered druids, take primal energies into themselves as forms of power. These options exist to complement existing ones for characters focused on transforming themselves with morph and polymorph abilities. The first feat, almost all of these are feats. The very end there's like lists of stuff, so you'll probably want to pause at the end to see those. The first feat, level 4, Brutal Crush. One action, barbarian, druid, and mental traits. Prerequisite, animal instinct, or untamed order. Like just mentioned. Requirements, your last action dealt bludgeoning damage using an unarmed strike granted by a morph or polymorph effect. You've learned how to cloud your foe's minds with the brutal impact of your repeated attacks. Make an unarmed strike against the same target. If the strike hits and deals bludgeoning damage, the target is stupefied 2 for 1 round, stupefied 3 on a critical hit. That's... Great for those weak, addle-brained casters. Next feat, level 4, Creature Comforts. It's a reaction for barbarians and druids. Those are the traits. Prerequisites, animal instinct or untamed order. Trigger, you become frightened. Requirements, you're under a morph or polymorph effect. You've found comfort in the forms of other creatures, insulating yourself from feelings of fear. Reduce your frightened condition value by 1 to a minimum of 0. This is awesome. That's all it does, but that's all it needs to do. You can use it as a reaction when you are frightened as many times per day as you want. Just once per effect, but you can just keep doing this. This really makes you feel like the fearless barbarian. The fearless rage ability. I, I like this a lot. It harkens back to days of old and when 3.5 had way too many feet trees, but it had stuff like this too. Rip and tear. Next feat, one action. Has the barbarian and druid traits, prerequisites, animal instinct, or untamed order. Requirements, your last action dealt piercing or slashing damage using an unarmed strike granted by a morph or polymorph effect. You've learned to debilitate your enemies in the same way a hunter tears at their prey. Make an unarmed strike against the same target. If the strike hits and deals piercing or slashing damage, the target takes an additional 1d6 persistent bleed damage. If you're at least 12th level, increase this to 2d6 persistent bleed damage. Bleed damage is always nice, because it's unlikely that it will end at the end of their first turn. They're going to take continuous damage from this. Very cool. Next feat, level 6, Misty Transformation. It's a reaction. It has the druid and primal traits, frequency once per minute, trigger you transform due to a polymorph effect. Wild mists cover your form. You create a hazy cloud in a five-foot burst centered on one corner of your space. If your new form is larger or larger, the cloud covers your entire space instead. All creatures within the area are concealed, and all others are concealed to them. The cloud lasts until the beginning of your next turn, but is immediately dispersed by a strong wind. This is really cool. It reminds me of the D&D feat Cloudy Conjuration. I think that was also 3.5. Cloudy Conjuration wasn't as useful as this, because in order to avoid the penalties of it, your summoned things also had to have some special ability to get around it. This is right around you, so it's much easier to maximize the potential of it. It's a really cool feat. It's good. It's useful. It can keep you alive and, well, you know, scare the crap out of your enemies. But it's also useful for just, like, teaming up with your other players. Next feat, level 6, Toppling Transformation. It's a reaction, druid only. Trigger. Your size increases due to a polymorph effect. You use your body's expansion as leverage to displace a nearby creature. You attempt to shove or trip an adjacent creature. For the purposes of determining what size creature you can affect, use your final size after the triggering effect. It's not a huge bonus, but it's just a bonus that you get that doesn't take any extra actions. It's just what happens when your size increases due to shape-shifting. It's cool. It's useful. It's only one creature. 
but it's a like it's a free action basically i know it's a reaction but druids don't have a lot of reactions anyway so this is good it's useful next feat jumping to level 12 that's a little disappointing because i like the lower level feats because they make more of a difference in a character's life next feat level 12 defensive dismissal reaction druid trait trigger a creature you're aware of critically succeeds on a strike against you requirement you're under a polymorph effect that you can dismiss you change your form as a means of evading a potentially fatal blow. You dismiss the polymorph effect you are under, and the result of the triggering strike becomes a success instead of a critical success. This is great, and so are all abilities like it. If you would no longer fit in your space as a result of returning to your normal form, this action fails, and you don't dismiss the polymorph effect. Okay, well, that's a little bit of a bummer, but it just, like, restricts combos that could be broken. Anyway, you can change a critical hit to a regular hit, is great it's like innately having higher armor but just during that ability <laughs> it's it's quite nice especially if you don't have the higher ac because you're a droid next feat level 12 explosive metamorphosis that's like one of the greatest words ever one action druid spell shape so it's metamagic you use additional primal energy to transform, creating a burst of elemental energy to complement your transformation. If your next action is to cast a non-cantrip morph or polymorph spell, select acid, cold electricity, or fire. Your transformation creates a five-foot emanation around your new form that deals 1d6 damage of that type per rank of the spell. Each creature in that area attempts a basic reflex save against your spell DC. If your polymorph action had a trait corresponding to an energy type, you must select that one if possible. This action gains the trait corresponding to the energy type selected. This is freaking cool! It, explosive metamorphosis. It does what it says on the tin. You shapeshift and blow the hell out of little enemies around you. Yes, I love you too. Next feat level 14, cleansing transformation, druid only. Prerequisites, healing transformation. I can see multiclassing from barbarian into druid, uh, sorry, multiclass archetyping into druid from barbarian just to make sure you get all of these. Because it's cool. And they're useful for barbarians, too. Because this is all about, like, being in melee combat. Which barbarians do. And certain druids do. But those cert those barbarians might also want the certain druids' abilities that are listed here. Cleansing transformation, feat 14. Druid prerequis prerequisites healing transformation. You learn to cleanse bodily toxins alongside the transformations of your shape-changing magic. When you use Healing Transformation, your Polymorph spell can also attempt to counteract one disease or poison afflicting the target. If you don't successfully counteract it, you can't use Cleansing trans Transformation against that specific affliction for 24 hours. I love this, again, because it's just a rider effect. I like not having to prepare things like removing afflictions, because if you don't come across that affliction, the affliction removal doesn't do anything. And you just wasted a spell slot. This is a way to mitigate that. It's great. I like it. Next feat, level 14, Towering Transformation. It's a reaction, and it has the traits Barbarian, Druid, Emotion, Fear, Mental, Rage, and Visual. Trigger, your size increases due to a polymorph effect. The physical growth of your transformation is a spectacle that shakes foes to their core. Each enemy smaller than your new size within 30 feet of you must attempt a will save against your class DC or spell DC, whichever is higher. Success, they're unaffected. Failure, they become frightened. One, critical failure, they're frightened. Two, and you can push it up to 10 feet from you with no separate check. This is forced movement. This is awesome! You affect an area of enemies, making them frightened or possibly pushing them away. This is great. I wish we were a little bit lower level, but that's just me. It is appropriate for its level because it's just a reaction. Again, it's a writer with something that you're already doing. This is nice. This book is so good. Next feat, last feat. Level 16, too much to swallow. One reaction, drew a trait, prerequisite, untamed form. Trigger, you're subject to an effect you could attempt to escape. While you might be small enough to grab normally, you can change that at a moment's notice. You cast Untamed Form. If you took on a new form that's too large for the effect, you automatically escape. Otherwise, you attempt to escape. If this ends an effect where you entered the creature's space, such as Swallow Hole, exit that creature to an adjacent area where you, your new form could fit. It's like it just vomits you up. You crawl out the mouth. Or, I know this is gross. Oh, well. So, there are some bullfrogs that, like swallow a fly or another insect 
and their digestive tract is so short that if the bug hurries, it can just exit and it doesn't get digested at all. So too much to swallow could just mean you're quick and you go through the process fast and come out on the other side. That's enough detail. You get it. Now, these are the next, the, the new animal instinct options. The new options in the table below are available for animal instinct barbarians to select at level one. I am surprised there are so many. So a lot of the new stuff in this book that like you can grab or change into are things like mostly amphibious or aquatic. But this is more than that. Okay, I'll read them to you. And you can pause the screen. Before I read the animal instinct options, which I will, I want to read the weapon traits to you. Zooming back in. Weapon traits. The following weapon traits are used for the instinct options presented here, in addition to traits from player Pathfinder Player Core. Raising. Raising weapons are particularly good at damaging objects, structures, and vehicles. It's R-A-Z-I-N-G. Whenever you deal damage to an object, including shields and animated objects, structure, or vehicle with a raising dam with a raising weapon, the object takes an amount of additional damage equal to double the number of weapon damage dice. It's not a lot, but on a shield, that could matter. I don't really use humanoids when I'm running a game. So this wouldn't be really useful for my players. <laughs> Unless they want to just, like, batter down the castle. The last weapon trait here is Venomous. These weapons inject poison into every hit. When you hit a creature with this weapon, it deals an additional one persistent poison damage. This increases the two persistent poison damage if the weapon has a greater striking rune. That's enough to trigger weaknesses, but there aren't many that many creatures that have a weakness to poison. But it is just a little bit of extra damage. It's a bonus. It's a little bit. And persistent damage can be really annoying to get rid of because it's all just down to flat checks or maybe people helping you out. But how many bad guys in the middle of combat get like doused with water from their allies to put out fire, for example, or acid? Doesn't happen often. Now the animal instinct options. The new options in the table below are available for animal instinct barbarians to select at level one. Ankylosaurus. Gets a tail attack that does 1d10 bludgeoning damage that has the raising and unarmed traits. So the raising does extra damage to objects, including shields. Ant has a mandibles attack that does 1d10 piercing damage and has the traits grapple and unarmed. Bat has both a fangs and wings attack. Fangs does 1d10 piercing, wings does 1d4 piercing. That should be bludgeoning, man. Oh, whatever. The fangs it has the unarmed trait, and the wings have the parry and unarmed traits. Parry? Wings? Piercing? Really? I don't know. I should be bludgeoning. There are some typos in this. Some of which drive me nuts, but some I'm unsure on. Was that intentionally piercing? Who knows? We'll find out later. Bird Animal Instinct has a beak that is 1d10 piercing unarmed, and a talon that does 1d6 slashing agile unarmed. The Brontosaurus Animal Instinct has a tail that does 1d10 bludgeoning damage, trip, and unarmed. I love that they're including dinosaurs. This is great. Crab. It has a big claw that does 1d10 bludgeoning that has the raising and unarmed traits, and a claw that does 1d4 slashing damage and has parry and unarmed. So it has a big claw and a little claw. Crocodile has a jaws attack that does 1d10 piercing and it's unarmed and a tail attack that does 1d6 bludgeoning, agile, and unarmed, and makes you qualified for the flip a contestant archetype. It's a great archetype! I just keep mentioning it. Orca Animal Instinct gives you a Jaws attack that does 1d8 piercing, and it has the forceful and unarmed traits. Cool. Scorpion. Ah, oh, scorpions. Has a Stinger attack that does 1d6 piercing, that has reach, unarmed, and venomous, so it does that extra persistent poison damage. And reach? And has a pincher attack that has 1d4 slashing that has parry and unarmed. I like scorpion. That's quite useful. The seal animal instinct has a jaws attack that has 1d10 piercing with the grapple and unarmed traits. Spider has a fangs attack that has 1d8 piercing that has the grapple, unarmed, and venomous traits. And it has a web attack that has a range increment of 15 feet and the damage is special. So here's the inset panel on the spider web. 
The spider's web attack deals no damage, but the target takes a minus 10 foot circumstance penalty to its speeds for one round on a hit. If a target is hit a second time by the same character's web attack while they have this penalty, they're instead immobilized until they succeed at a check to escape against your class DC. I love this. This is great. This is just what I would pick because you can immobilize people and as a melee person, that's awesome. Because, 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 yeah. Next animal instinct, Tyrannosaurus. Has a Jaws attack that has 1d8 piercing with deadly d12, and it's unarmed. And has a tail attack that does 1d6 bludgeoning and the agile and unarmed traits, and it qualifies you for the flip it contestant archetype. Wasp has a stinger attack that does 1d4 piercing, the backstabber trait, deadly d8 trait, unarmed, and venomous. That's nasty. That's cool. I like the wasp. Now, the animal form spell also has additional forms you can change into. So I'll read the section on animal form expansion. Listed here are new options for animals to choose with the animal form spell. These options are accessible to anyone casting the spell, not just animal instinct barbarians and untamed order druids. Crab, speed 25 feet, swim speed 15 feet, which is always nice. Melee, one action, big claw, damage is 2d8 piercing, or melee, one action, little claw that has agile. The damage is 2d4 piercing, and you can breathe in water and in air, so you're amphibious. That's cool. Crocodile, speed 25 feet, swim speed 30 feet. Neat! That's really fast in the water. Melee, one action, jaws, damage is 2d8 piercing. Melee, one action, tail, has the agile trait, and damage is 1d8 bludgeoning. You can hold your breath for the duration of the transformation. Oh, cool. All right, so it's not just a certain amount of time. It's while you're doing, well, that makes sense because it's usually like 10 minutes or an hour, and the spell doesn't last that long. Orca, swim speed 35 feet, melee, attack, one action, jaws, damage 2d8 piercing, and you can hold your breath for the duration of the transformation. Seal, speed 20 feet, swim speed 30 feet, melee, one action, jaws, grapple, damage 2d6 piercing, and you can also hold your breath for the duration of the transformation. So it also, this is mostly aquatic, like I said, amphibious stuff. But they're useful. And I'm a big fan of the Animal Instinct Scorpion and Spider. Neat! I love adding more mechanics, just more options for cool shit you can do to things that are already pretty cool, like the Animal Instinct Barbarian. That's all there is. John, this was at your request. I hope you found something interesting here. And we can keep talking about it on Discord, of course. And if anybody else here wants to join Discord, the link's in the description. Also, for Patreon... Thank you, Patreon members, for being here. I mean, thank all of you, of course, but I got to keep mentioning my patrons because I'm grateful for them. They make this channel better. They give loot better treats. He loves you whether he knows it or not. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're having a drawing at the end of the month, Loot's Choice. Loot will pick the winner for the blue scale, the blue dragon scale dice bag that's freaking huge and holds a lot of freaking dice in just a few days so if you're not a patron now go to patreon for at least five dollars you can have a chance to win that and we do dice giveaways every month too there is at least one more how the wild video coming out because people want okay one person two pe two people wanted to know about some monsters so i'm just gonna like give an overview of the monsters because the monsters are almost half the freaking book like i've covered a lot of stuff here this is the 18th how the wild video and that's just half the book Jesus. Anyway, it's obviously a worthwhile book. So the next video I'm going to put out is going to be about the monsters. I'm going to do an overview and select a few that are just fun or weird or interesting. Like Hydras or the little gremlin that comes up to you and asks for gold. Because it's weird. <laughs> if you want to see the rest, of the, playlist, uh, the rest of the videos on the playlist for Hell of the Wilds right here, build videos are here. Yes, I'll be getting to more build videos just as soon as I stop producing Hell of the Wild videos, which will be soon. Soon. Okay, thanks, bye.